quarter that really was the turning point on Labor Day. They start at their 22, and Ricky Ray throws an interception. Shannon James has the pick, and he has the touchdown. Jumped about to say, Chris, it was the third quarter and three quick turnovers by Calgary on Labor Day that turned the game around so quickly, and just like that, Ricky Ray steps in and throws it right into the hands of Shannon James, who he does not see. Let's go, boy! We back! Number 23 with 23 on the return for the major. His first interception of the year. He lines up on the left side of the formation. That's why he doesn't count him in the pass coverage. And Shannon James slides over to the middle, and Ricky Ray throws it right to him. Lysak with a pick last week. James with an even bigger one here tonight. Another opening minute defensive touchdown. What? This is going to the Stampeders. Yeah, it was those turnovers that cost the Stampeders on Labor Day. Now they get one in the rematch to start the second half. And Shannon James is putting together a good football game. Remember, he had a sack in the first half on Ricky Ray and a couple big tackles. Eight tackles on Monday, and he's been even more of a force here tonight. Tristan Jackson cut down at the 25-yard line again. Dwayne Carpenter, first man down for the Stamps. We have a great look at this interception and touchdown. There's San Shannon James. He, he, I'm going to show you how he hides over there and then slides across. Ricky Ray is looking at a window, and that window is for right here. Kelly Campbell coming in, and he sees Grotegood here, the linebacker. He's going to try and time it up and throw it into the window, but Shannon James has slid across from the opposite side. He takes that football away, not counted by Ricky Ray, and then just beats him to the end zone. Okay, when Edmonton scored a defensive touchdown to start the game, Calgary came back and answered. Let's see what Ricky Ray can do after his miscue. E.J. Harris exploding off the side all the way to midfield. He had 91 yards from scrimmage in the first half and just ripped off another big gain. Well, you know, it's amazing to me that A.J. Harris, who's right in the backfield behind Ricky Ray, has run this play three times. The first time, it was successful like this. The second time, he got tackled in the backfield by Brandon Smith, number 28. But this time, they put a blocker out in front of him in Calvin Armstrong, and Armstrong picks up Brandon Smith, allows A.J. Harris some room to the outside. 32 for A.J. Harris, closing in on a 100-yard receiving game out of that Edmonton backfield. Now he'll carry it straight ahead. And a tough two to three for Harris on the ground. Defense is kicking it up here. They started the game with a defensive touchdown from the Edmonton Eskimos off this miscue. The shotgun formation for Calgary. That was Shannon Garrett. And in, in the rematch, we start the second half with a Calgary defensive touchdown. Yeah, both touchdowns scored by number 23. <laughs> Wild things happen on Labor Day and the Labor Day rematch. Second and eight from the stamp, 51. Here comes the blitz, but play halted by Ken Lazarick, and there was some movement on that Edmonton offensive line in anticipation of the pressure. Well, Shannon James, who's been all over this football field, walked up as did Juwan Armour. And it looked like they were going to blitz both from the same side of the field. And when they did, it looked like the offensive line recognized it. Shannon James is right here and Armour right beside him. And watch how they walk up to the line of scrimmage. The offensive line realize, oh, oh we got, we might have block, we might have to block that blitz. And they come out of their stance. I think it was Cabongo. Yeah, Patrick Cabongo, the right guard, was the man moving prematurely. Second and 13, back on the Edmonton side of half protection for Ray and now releasing is Harris Harris trying to get to the first down stick and he's going to get it there powering his way to a first down as he pushed back on Dwight Anderson the quarterback and over 100 yards receiving for A.J. Harris tonight 
three-man pressure from the Calgary Stout Peters. So Ricky Ray knows that he is going to wait and allow all those droppers, all the guys in the pass coverage for Calgary to get deep enough so that A.J. Harris will have some room. Ricky Ray recognized the three-man rush. He held on to the ball long enough to give Harris some time. He likes playing at Commonwealth Stadium. His last home game, 189 rushing. Already 105 receiving tonight. Ray stands in, and Harris is going to add to his totals with a few more, and is punished there by Dwayne Carpenter. Success on first down in this drive, though, for Ricky Ray and, and using A.J. Harris out of the backfield. What, what happens if the quarterback continues to throw to the backs? The defense is forced to play man-to-man -man defense to come up and stop him, and that will mean that they'll take a linebacker like Shannon James and try and cover A.J. Harris out of the backfield in a man-to-man -man situation. That's when you see Ricky Ray then go to Fred Stamps or Kamal Peterson down the field because he gets the one-on-one -on -one in the secondary. Second and two. Matt Grudigan into the game defensively. First man through is Bertrand, the fullback, and he'll have the first down. Late flag. Some jostling well away from the play. Was that Brandon Browner and Kelly Campbell? It was, yes. And that wasn't close to anything involving the football. It's funny because the Calgary Stampeders switched things up against the Edmonton Eskimos on Labor Day. Calgary in the secondary have been a team that like to get up in the face of receivers and play bump and run. And in, on Labor Day, they backed off. They gave the receivers for Edmonton a lot more room. Clearly, that didn't work out. And I saw Brandon Browner get up, and James has been up in coverage a bunch, and get back to that old style, the old Calgary style. The Eskimo said they prepared all last week for Calgary's signature press coverage, and they didn't get it at all on Monday. Oh, we have problems with Ken Lazarick's microphone, but I believe it's Kelly Campbell on the face mask yes. after first down yardage had been gained. You know, on Labor Day, we had four penalties yeah. for 32 yards. That's astounding between these two teams. The Edmonton Eskimos have not been in double figures in penalties all season long. They're averaging 6.7 penalties per game. And as you mentioned, they had just five last week, Labor Day. Least penalized team in the league. Campbell looked like he was continuing the debate with Browner from the huddle. It is a first to 10 to back at the 45. More flags flying all over the place. And Ray running and now just throwing the ball away. But there are three markers on the field. Well, I think this was going to come back. Joe McGrath was working one-on-one -on, -one on Mike Lobinjo. I believe number 63 is going to get napped for holding. Former Calgary Stampeder draft choice, the number two pick overall in 2003. Not sure there wasn't one other penalty unless all three flags were for the same offense. Offside, that was declined. Holding number 63, which is Joe McGrath, will be first down over again. They'll take the holding penalty, not the offside penalty. Labinjo is right here, and you're going to see him one on one on number 63, Joe McGrath, and you're going to see the holding. Inside move, and then he comes back out and look at McGrath, grab him, and hook him down. And that's why Ricky Ray was able to escape. And Labinjo's been a handful all night. So it's first and 20 back at midfield. The Eskimos had moved the football down to the 30. And Ricky Ray looking in that direction. Come on, Peterson hung up long enough to bring it down. When A.J. Harris has success, it pulls the linebackers closer to the line of scrimmage, and they can't get in that intermediate zone to help out. So Kamal Peterson now takes the next best thing, and what he's going to do is work into the open area in behind of the linebacker core, and Ricky Ray will throw him open. Here comes Kamal Peterson, number eight, a little bit deeper than the linebackers who are still worried about A.J. Harris. Completion for Edmonton. 
So a 30-yard pass play to come out. Peterson and a fresh set of downs. Now A.J. Harris takes the first man miss and has another first down. Shannon Jean pushes him out, but he's inside the 15-yard line. That's the other thing when Ricky Reyes has used A.J. Harris on the short crossers. 